Hey guys, this is Dana, and this is episode number 43 of the Ask a Question show, the show in which you ask a question about any type of narcissistic or otherwise toxic or abusive relationship or situation, and I, along with the rest of the community here, will do our very best to help answer it. Our goal is to give you the feedback and the support that you need so that you can move forward in getting all of the clarity, the closure, and the healing possible. And so today's question comes from a handful of different people, actually, and it has to do with how do highly manipulative people create these intense sexual bonds and more importantly like that addictive feeling that we have towards them how do we go about breaking that so I'm gonna do my best to answer it if you feel like I've missed anything or if you just would like to add your two cents in down below please feel free to do so so we'll go from there so okay how do they even go about creating the sexual bond this well this all happens very early on in these relationships and this has to do with the earlier red flags, right? So it has to do with love bombing, which is that intense level of constant communication. It's constant compliments. It's them wanting to spend all of their time with us and us wanting to spend all of our time with them. And so, you know, we feel just so loved and accepted and there's all this attention and we feel important and it's just, it can be very intoxicating. This kind of leads to another red flag, which has to do with that rushing of intimacy, which is tends to be having sex very early on. The sex tends to be absolutely amazing because in large part, these people are trying to give us everything that they know that we are wanting and, and needing. And so they do this by listening to us. They do this by mirror, mirroring us. So um and it, it's just that love bombing. It's kind of all of it all together all at once. So we're just feeling, you know, very loved and very important and very significant and very accepted. They're spending all of their time with us. They're telling us everything that we need to hear. If And, and so here's, I think, why we tend to kind of fall into this. Because healthy people don't tend to fall into these kinds of dynamics. And so why is that? Well, there's this theory out there. It was a question that was posed a long time ago having to do with empty buckets. And it's based, those empty buckets have to do with our kind of fundamental human needs. And so I talked in another video about Maslow and his whole hierarchy of needs. I've kind of just simplified his whole pyramid to basically two types of primary needs. So we have our physical needs, which have to do with more of our basic, like human survival needs, like food, clothing, water, air, shelter, these kinds of things. Then we have emotional needs. And these needs have to do with a sense of safety, stability, uh, significance. So feeling loved, feeling um, important, fe getting attention, getting affection, um, that sense of stability that we can rely on what kind of have comfort that we can be okay with kind of what life brings us, right? And so for a lot of us that tend to stay in these relationships, if these, if things w win, when things start going bad, because if we're in a relationship with a highly manipulative person, kind of by whatever name you want to call them, um, you know, sociopath, psychopath, antisocial, borderline, there's lots of different names for manipulative people. And, and of course, it's all a spectrum as well. So some people can be, you know, mon manipulative and a lot more dangerous and destructive than other kinds. But and of course, manipulative people can be male or female. But um, so if we're with in a dynamic like this, if we're being manipulated, then there is no chance of some sort of healthy dynamic because we're not in a relationship, right? We're in a manipulationship and there's a big difference there. So if when that relationship starts to cause us pain, when it starts to really crumble and we start to really see them for who they are and really who they are is what they're doing when they think nobody's looking, right? Um. And if we stay in it, it's because we're associating more pain with leaving than we actually are with staying. And so why is this? Well, this again goes back to those those different human needs. If we didn't get a lot of these needs, and this is just my take on it all, if we didn't get these needs met early on as kids, then we tend to be walking around with these empty buckets. So and I've used this example. Well, I'll use another example. So let's say, for example, if you were a child and you had a parent who was uh, maybe an addict or an alcoholic, or maybe you guys moved around a lot. So you didn't have a real sense of stability in your life. Um, as an adult, stability might be really, really important for you. And so you might find yourself staying in really unhealthy situations or staying at jobs that you hate or doing all different kinds of things that don't seem to make sense to you or maybe even make sense to other people. But you're doing it most likely to keep that sense of stability in your life. 
Okay, so another example might be if your empty buckets have to do with, um, you know, I've mentioned this before, mine have to do with, I have felt very ignored and unloved for a very long time growing up. It wasn't intentional by my parents. It just kind of was the way that I processed how things kind of went down in my childhood. So because of that, I was a real, I just really fell into all of that love bombing and that rushing of intimacy. I was starved out for that attention and that affection and the, well, the attention and the affection. And so, so this is kind of, I think that's why we tend to feel addicted to these relationships. So we confuse, um, these kinds of feelings of clinging, this craving, this was wanting to keep this relationship to work with love. And, and it's not right. So love is, has to do with respect and dignity and honesty and open and sincere communication and accountability and responsibility. Love is not clinging. It's not fear-based. It's not, um, you know, that you somehow need this other person to survive. Like that's not love. That is, has to do with meeting some sort of need that you're not getting met in any other way or that this relationship is meeting that need in a very, very basic way. So that's why I think it's hard for a lot of people to walk away from these relationships. Because if you're getting crumbs of attention or affection from this person, then those crumbs are oftentimes enough to keep a person there because they're so starved out that it's sort of like, well, okay, I'll settle for crumbs because crumbs are better than nothing. And that's kind of the mentality, but that's not accurate, right? Because th there's so much more out there that than just crumbs. But the deal is you, you have to kind of, you have to leave what we have to leave this. You have to leave what's comfortable, even though what's comfortable is painful. You have to leave where you currently are in order to move forward and get something else. And so that's why I think we have this addictive feeling because it's, it's just, it's meeting our needs. Okay. So now how do we break that? What do we do about it? Well, okay. So now if you are getting an idea of what empty buckets do you have now, you can go about filling them as an adult because here's the deal too with the, with the different needs. If our parents didn't meet these needs when we were kids, I feel like we tend to still look at other people kind of through that child's mind of we're looking towards other people to continue to fill those buckets for us, just like we would if we were a child, right? So, I mean, it makes sense, but a lot of, and this is just my take on it, but a lot of it is really subconscious. It's not like we're, we're aware of this, but it's really cool because kind of once you know better, now you can do better. And so now you can go about being like, yeah, you know what? I really struggle with needing stability in my life or with needing um, affection in my life. So now you can go meet that in, in different ways that are so much more helpful. You can find stability by, you know, getting a job and by having a savings account and by, you know, um, making sure that your house is in good order, or making sure that your car is in good order, doing different things to make sure that you're keeping that stability there. You can get that attention or that affection by, I mean, you could donate your time to an animal shelter, right? And, and walk dogs. That's a fantastic way to get a bunch of affection. You could join meetup.com, which is, I love this website. It's, you can go out there and you can join a bunch of groups of like-minded people that love the same things that you do. And it's a great way to have that connection and, and to meet other people. And it's sincere and honest. And, um, you know, so you're filling those buckets for yourself and, the great thing about this is so now when you do get all of your buckets filled, you kind of have your highest and best self. You've discovered your highest and best self. And so now the next relationship that you get into, you're bringing kind of this like, you know, uh, 2.0 version of yourself, like this better self to the table. And so you're going to be attracted and attracting people that are also at a similar level. You've probably heard the, the analogy that, you know, water or the example of water seeks its own level. Like this is very true when it, when it comes to everything in life, but especially with dating. So we tend to date and be friends with people that are kind of at the same level of dysfunction or health or function that we are. And so um, a lot of it just comes down to getting your own empty buckets filled so you're not so starved out that you're you're clinging to things that are not healthy for you. And so I hope that that kind of helps um, 
clarify that it helps you to to start breaking those feelings of that addictive feeling towards these these people so if you can get your your needs met in another way i think you will very quickly find that that tie that hold that that this relationship seems to have over you like that will just dissipate and it have it can happen really quickly too so just kind of know that I will, I will be really curious to see kind of what you guys have to say about this and, you know as always any questions comments concerns frustrations ideas insights you have some feedback um, you know you need some support you just want to say hi best place to get a hold of me is in my support group I try to be there every single day and uh, as always and I'll link down to that below in the description area but as always lots of love to you guys you're not alone you're not crazy and you really can move forward and heal from this so take care and I will talk to you soon okay bye